again, get one again. Yes, paper is out. Thank you very much. Paper is out. Some of it's back in. Three paper, three packs of paper came out, and an email from Mr. Strauss and said, "Put it back in, please. I'm not coming today." So. Yes, we're back to Cherry, of course, the color blocks for this print. Of course, you're going to be on Cherry with paper. There's no way you can do color blocks on a hardwood like boxwood. It's, uh, it doesn't work. Water doesn't go inside the surface.
what we've got here. It's one of the color bodies. So let's see if we can figure out which one. Hang on a sec. Let's see which one it is. Where's the... Uh... Here's a design. This is the level three block. If you look up here, you can see it here. In the print itself on the left, there's a color, there's color, very faint color under the light. Then there's a second color there, and there's a third color here. We're looking at the third color. It sort of looks purple. This is the one that shows actually most of the body of the of the night cherries. Which is, a th which is built up from three layers. You can see it too in the, on the shrine roof. Well, you can't see it here because it doesn't exist. But uh, this is the third level. You can maybe see it here. This one coming in from the right-hand side. You can see that over on the left. So of course we're working on it's like a reduction print. We're taking away areas, leaving dark. This could all have been done actually with one piece of wood. The mic is crackly. Here's the mic, let's unplug it. plugged back in. The audio is picking up from the Magewell video interface. Is it crackly now? Testing one, two, three. Give me a tad of feedback. Still crackling. Let's do a test and I'll turn off that mic and I'll turn on the laptop mic. Just hang on a sec. Let's see how this works. Okay, the plug-in mic is now turned off, and the laptop mic is now turned on, but you're probably hearing fan noise. Still crackling when I speak? Testing one, two, three. Dave doesn't talk, so they can't tell. Testing one, two, three. No crackling now. Well, I'm not about to muck around, there's too much more. If it's okay, we'll just leave it like this for now. And after we've rebooted the computer or something, it'll probably come back better. I'm not, I'm not about to shut it down and reboot it all now, so. Okay, we'll just leave it like that. All right, this is block number, what is it? Block number one, two, three, four. I'm on the fourth one, and I'm working in order from the most difficult complex ones, or the most detailed, down to the ones that don't have detail. So we're going to be really moving through this thing. The, the key block took three days, I think. I started Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. And Wednesday was one color block. Thursday was it? Thursday's another one. Anyway, we're going. Let's get going. Enough talk. Let's cut.
so it'll soften the water. Let me Photoshop file out just for reference here. Let me get Photoshop file out just for So I just need to go back and forth a bit to check the Photoshop file.
Be a quiet morning, right? You guys are quiet. I'm quiet. I just keep, in, keep chewing through this. If you were on yesterday's stream, you'll know we've got a bit of show and tell today. Some interesting stuff coming in yesterday. Some very, very interesting stuff coming in. And we'll take a few minutes after Cameron gets out of breath. We'll take a look at some of those things. Let me see what's happening here. This is this the area right here is a perfect example of why we have to work with this double way. We can't just print out Jed's Photoshop layers on eight pieces of wood and carve. Because the Photoshop layers, Jed's did some interesting design, but the Photoshop layers don't match what we have to do in reality. I don't think you can see it here. You see the white, there's a white gap here. I don't think you can see it over here. Not, not the white of the box, there's a white gap on top of the box. And when Jed's doing this, he's painting with his Photoshop, and sometimes he clicks and does bucket fills, sometimes he paints with brushes, whatever. And for us, we need to bring this color block right into the middle of the black line, so that there's going to be color inside the line and no color outside it. But Jed's layers don't always match like that. They're close, but whatever, they're not close enough for woodblock print. Here they lined up, here they didn't line up. 
So what we did on this print, I took a combination. I took a piece of Gompi paper. I first, I first printed my key block, which defines where the lines are going to be. Then on top of that, I put this sheet of Gompi, which had Jed's printout on it. And I lined it up for the places that needed to be lined up, but as much as I could line it up. And then I took the layer, I took the combination back to the key block and printed it again to make sure I could see the lines on top of the copy. And this combination shows me the discrepancy. It shows me where Jet is okay. It shows me the IDs I need to carve. It shows me all these things. All these lines here, it is, tup, 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 tup. I can't possibly do this without Jet's Photoshop. I need the Photoshop stuff here, but I also need the black lines to show me where the board should be. So it's a bit troublesome, but by doing it this way, we get ultimate accuracy. We've got the color in the lines, and we've got his patterns.
How the views and comments on YouTube go? I guess they're okay. I haven't looked at them yet this morning. I don't have any, I don't, I haven't noticed anything wrong. The views on YouTube recently are a bit light. Uh, I think because I haven't been posting very regularly on YouTube, the algorithm is uh, not 
so I have made it there. It's, it's not really recommended to do this as much as it has been. Made. That's probably because I've been posting it frequently. Slept in again this morning. It's unusual for me. I did sleep so long last night. It's really unusual. I did go out like a lot. Last night I didn't sleep. Then my schedule's been a bit disrupted. I've been doing much more time at the carbon bench than I usually do. I'm trying to get a bunch of stuff done before leaving for vacation, before leaving for Canada next week. And I was on the schedule to get it all done. And yesterday someone came up, the, uh, our accountant, our tax accountant, not the tax people, but our accountant wants a meeting and I know what he wants to talk about and it's just going to be a bag of hurt. And we've been growing like crazy the last few years and we are a private thing, it's a private business, it's a proprietorship of a company. And when you're a company there's very strict rules about once you've reached a certain number of employees, you have to do this sort of thing. You start paying these benefits and you start filing insurance for people and stuff like this. And, uh, it's not that we haven't been paying it. It's that when, you're, when you, you register with the various agencies, you register with the pension agency, you register with the workers' compensation agency, and blah, blah, blah. And then there's contributions. I make contributions and the staff themselves fund their own pay. The contributions come out. Up to now, we haven't done any of that. It's all been handled private. For example, Cameron gets his pay here. I give him 100% of his pay. I don't take out anything for health insurance, but we pay for the health insurance on top of it. He then goes to the agency, pays the insurance, and blah, blah, blah. So we're, we're doing the right thing. It's just the way that the paperwork flows and the money flows. It's all been not on my desk, but it's on the individual people's desk. And we've been under the radar, but now we've got so many employees, so many people working here that we've popped up, I guess it seems. Oh, the, the tax account is telling us, look, you've got to do this the formal, normal way. Even though you're not a company, they've treated you quietly because you're a proprietorship, but you're now getting big enough that you have to follow the actual rules. And he's going he's gonna to lay the law down for us. And we, we're going over there this afternoon. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. It's exactly what he's going to say. Okay, here's the registration forms. Go and register with the pension agency, the workers' compensation agency, the health insurance, uh, and one more, I forget what it is. And like I said, it's going to be a bag of hurt. Because once you do that, you have to file with each one of these agencies every month a report for every employee. And just give me a break. When I investigated this a few years ago, it's the, these things, the employee contributions, plus the additional tax liabilities, it's almost going to require a full-time person just to do this paperwork. And Cameron's dreading this because I'm going to look at him and say, okay, Cameron, over you, let's get started on this. And he's like busy. He's basically busy all day, all, all day, every day now, doing what he does. He's running the order processing, he runs the subscriptions, for the first thing, he does all the payroll. Uh, he's been out here with movies. And if he has all this paperwork, all of a sudden dumped on his bed, actually, he would just become a clerk. And if I did that to him, I can tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be the handwriting at the end of the wall. He's just not going to stay. He doesn't want to be a clerk in the office somewhere. He's doing sort of a lot of clerical jobs at the moment as part of his work, but that's not his goal in life, you know, to be a bookkeeper. I go back to exactly where I am when I started the Patreon two years ago. We, we opened up the Patreon to help bring money to hire an employee to do these things. And now he's basically paid for the internal money. And I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to re, refocus the Patreon money on another person and hire a clerk who sits in an office and just fills out forms. And I'm so resistant to that. I just do not want up with that stuff. Stupid paperwork. 
isn't like a prince. Avoiding the squiggly bits now. I've tried to do all the other areas first. And I've got a good edge on my knife, but it's quite possible I'll break it when I start doing the squiggly bits. So I'm trying to do the uh, sharpy parts first, and then straight smooth lines. And then I'll work on the chair blossoms. I'm going around those corners when I can possibly pop off the tip of the knife. So get these lines done. This was at that time already. I get surprised every day, you know, I'm ready for it. I'm thinking Cameron's coming, but it's always 8.43, we're halfway through, you know. I took an earlier train today. Every time I take an earlier train, it gets delayed. <laughs> I love this story. <laughs> I didn't even get a ticket to prove it to you this time. I think so. so I yeah. could have, but... It's a quiet stream. I'm, not, I'm, I'm almost I'm quiet myself. And I think these guys are pretty quiet. I think there was a couple of new people here on the stream. The chat people are doing a really good job at explaining what's going on. Oh, great. Like that. So I didn't really see much of what was happening. There, so. Should I join you today, then? Or yeah, whatever. Sure. So quiet. Can we turn it around Which without dropping? Are you on already? 
I don't, it's like. whatever, it's it's one of the purpley. This is the darkest purple, the one you see in when you see when you turn around in a minute. Okay. It's nice. We try and just turn this. I know. I think I won't touch the cable. I'll just try and turn it. You know what's going to happen here? We're going to rotate the computer, so it might go down. If it goes down, don't panic. That cable is stuck in the corner. Might trip something. Let's do this. Here we go. This is just like an operation or something. Whatever. We made it. Mm -hmm. No red light. I was just chatting about today, this afternoon's uh, uh, adventure. We're going to go and see the tax account. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm dreading it, but the person who's really dreading it is Cameron here because we know what's going to happen. They're going to tell us. Register, 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 register with these four agencies. Yeah. Monthly paperwork for each one. We're going to really? get the instructions of a deck of paper. It's going to be about six inches high. And Dave's going to say, hi, Cameron. Over here. Yeah. Thanks. And the mm. last thing Cameron wants to be is a, is a stupid <laughs> file clerk. You know, I mean, that's not what he's here for. So. Mm. Well, I don't needs know. to be done. But let's see what it is. And then if yeah. we get a girl to do it or something, I don't know. Cost. And then software, you have to run a stupid Windows machine to run that type of lesson. <laughs> if we do have to get a Windows machine, I, I really would like to have one real, real fundamental room. We will, don't run any mail software. Yeah. Not that Outlook or whatever, I'm not sure about this. No mail. Okay. We don't have to file stuff, you know, online. It's okay, but no. Some employees will click on the mail and that's it. It goes in there and it's compromised. And then, but, you know, if you think I've had it, I've had it. We've had so many years just running on that. So we don't have to worry about the finances and stuff. Yeah. Got it much better. <coughs> Business idea. Handmade washi toilet paper. Good idea, bad idea, profit. If you want to pay a hundred dollars per toilet roll. Someone said uh, oh, there's, they, there's, uh the long fibers the long fibers will strengthen the whole thing and allow reusability. <laughs> Yikes. Oh uh, that that's a laugh, laugh, ha ha. But the guy who is making our new paper saw his sound the guy we know we're experimenting with to try and get a new kind of paper built. His current business is mm -hmm. modeled on Japanese, handmade Japanese washi paper for shoji screens. Mm -hmm. It's not toilet paper, but it's a totally consumable, reusable, throwaway item. Yeah. And this is why we're trying to get him on board. So I said, spend your efforts making paper that will, you know, survive in society as a useful thing for a couple hundred years and not just sit there and get kids' fingers poked through. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to say that without insulting him because he's proud of what he's doing. Yeah. He's proud of his handmade shoji paper. So I can't mm -hmm. tell him. Get off that bag of crap and do a you know, I can't do that. I've got to honor yeah. what he's doing, but also suggest that it might be an interesting idea to try this. Yeah. Yeah. So. Your mother just sent you an email. Thanks. Because sometimes she writes during the stream when she has something she wants to see. Okay. Mm -hmm. oh. It's about your trip, so no, I'll let you know. Okay. Sorry. That should make you watch. She said, my mom, or someone here said, my mom barely understands email and she's younger than Dave. I'm impressed. Yeah. With my mother, yeah. yeah. She's doing well, so. 
Let's type. Mm -hmm. She watches streams pretty yeah, regularly. Cool. Oh. Oh, I didn't keep one hand to show on the screen, but Subasan yesterday afternoon mm. there, she was doing test printing on print number three oh, in the really? series, and it's going to look okay. I was a little bit not sure about this one, because how we were going to try and create some value and set up this, but it actually looks fine. Cool. She showed it to me briefly on her way downstairs. Mm -hmm. It's not there yet. It's just, there's, there's some big scrubs. They printed way too much deep green in the tree. There's a little lag in the tree. Ah, okay. You can see where we're going. That's what test printing is for. Yeah. It's funny too, we tried an experiment on uh, her and Johnson. Johnson was up there. Mm -hmm. The faces of the two characters on the park bench, the yeah. woman and the granddaughter, was amazing. Because of the small scale, Jed hasn't given us any facial features. It's just a, a human shape, you know. Right. Like the kind of scientists we have here. You know? They're just human shapes, there's no actual faces, eyes, and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. And Sui san thought, look, it looks a bit better for me. So Johnson tried to put some features in. He tried to put an eye in the woman, in, yeah. the, in the side of the face. We only see one side of the face, but he tried to put an eye there. Mm -hmm. And as soon as they showed it to me, I just had to break out laughing. Rather than do it on the key block with the black line, he just done it on one of the gray color blocks. Yeah. So it was this gray, blah, what it looked like a zombie, you know. There's a woman with a sunken skull sitting on this park bench with a light going in. And they were all like... What do you think about this? And I said, oh, do you really need to ask him what do you think about this? Get your knife out and get that off. And chop it, <laughs> it off. Oh, that's funny. I'm curious. I'm going to have to go see that one. Yeah, there's some tests. So this, we have some really rare test prints in our files here. If these ever get loose into the wild, oh my God. You know, yeah. I think to see the stuff on auction 150 years from now. You know, rare prints from Moko Hong Kong back in the day. Test. Yeah, we showed Jed's weird idea about what he was thinking about. Now, Jed had nothing to do with that whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, her mom jumped in. She said, yeah, I'm, I'm okay as long as things are fine, but sometimes Skype does weird things that I have to call for David. <laughs> but she does really well. great. Yeah. And she just seems like goes to a, a newspaper page, downloads their crossword puzzle and stuff like that, prints it. We tried a while ago, we got an iPad. We tried doing those you know, newspaper page crossword puzzles on the iPad. Mm -hmm. And it didn't go well. And even, and I can't blame her for this, and it didn't go well because I had the same problem as her. You'd be sitting there with the thing on your lap, you know, holding it. You try and tap the screen to do this. And if your thumb comes on the bezel just a little bit too far, your thumb hits something at the side of the screen. Yeah. And it's a button that says jump to the next page or whatever. So all of a sudden, my mother's doing this puzzle. Whatever. And all of a sudden, the whole screen changes yeah. from some reason that she has no idea what is, you know, you know, touch the screen. Yeah. And you don't know how to get back. And just the whole thing about an iPad was it was just too finicky and delicate. And as soon as you just delicately touch some place you weren't supposed to touch, bang, you're in a new world. Yeah. And whereas with her computer, she's got it. There's a screen, there's a mouse, you click, you move around, you do stuff, and you know where you are most of the time. You know? So the iPad thing was a big help. And I have tried frustrated with the iPad we have here. Mm -hmm. There's so many things. What was it yesterday? I was trying to find out how to get back. I was stuck. I had to go over to the main computer, yeah. Google up how to do something on the iOS, and yeah. go back and do it, because it wasn't intuitive. It's supposed to be this super intuitive interface. Yeah. And I couldn't figure it out. I've been mucking out with computers for over 40 years.
Oh, no, it was. It was uh, how, do you, how do you adjust the sound on the screen? Uh -huh. And on the iOS app, now what you've done is you go to the time at the top, you put your finger on, pull it down, it pulls yeah. down the thing. You don't do that anymore. So I tap here, I tap here, I pull it down here, pull it down, and left, and bottom. And I spent like 15 minutes trying to find this thing, and I couldn't find it. So I went over Where to the laptop. Where are they hidden? You've got to you go, go in the right one quarter of the top and pull it down. Yeah. And your finger has to be in the right one fifth or one quarter of the top screen before it pulls it down. Won't do it here, it does it there. And there's huh. no absolute, the only thing is the time, and time has been moved over to the left-hand side. Yeah. So that's sort of a clue. There's nothing happening here in the middle. Huh. And there's a new notification system that comes down. How do you adjust the sound? And I could not figure it out. Genius Dave here, after all these years, <laughs> and I could not find it. I had to give up. And it's not just me. After I found that, I was grumbling and grumbling and frustrated and grumbling. So the next person that came into view, take us on. I said, hey, take us on. Give me, give me a favor here. Try it. Adjust the volume of this from the screen. She says, oh, geez, you just pulled out. I said, go ahead, show me. She tries. The old one. Where is it? And she got it exactly the same. So it's not just me, you know. So, yeah. I'm in a mumbling mood this morning, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Didn't actually sleep well last night, but I didn't. And then faced with this meeting this afternoon. Ah. What do we need to prepare? Oh, I've got to print out all of a printout and take a, a printout and a PDF and an Excel spreadsheet of last yep. year's booking, right? Right. The money in and the money out. Mm -hmm. So I need to prepare those three things before we go. Yeah. What else? I think that's it, is it? You've got all the payroll stuff, the data on. Mm -hmm. Basically, how many people we have? You can take the, the one year's history. Is that what you can take? Yeah. Okay. Including the timesheet, so we can sort of make calculations. He's going to ask how many people have you got that are working more than yeah like twenty so, hours a week or something. Like so this morning, I want to okay. figure or refigure that. Out. We we did a basic ca yeah. calculation, but I want to kind of yeah. confirm it. Very first question. Because mm -hmm. he doesn't see that from the data that we send. Right. He gets monthly for this. We have no idea how many months per week these people are. Mm -hmm. And then the big one, pay new printers, black piece of paper. It's been illegal. And now I'll kind of keep the people in there. But these guys have just changed the paper sound or something. But I really, really, really do not agree. I don't think they do either. I think SuperSound is very, very happy. Less so. Yeah. We get rewarded for making lots of difficult prints and they have some hard months, they have hard months, but when they have good months, they're really good months. Yes, so, so it's as long as we keep a balance. If I just give her difficult work, mm -hmm. you know, then it doesn't work well. But yeah. then I think we've been doing it really well. Okay. Nice mix. Okay. Challenging me. She doesn't get quite as much money, but she'd be raising me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fill the interview spaces with work that she just chews through and blows through and runs to the bank. Yeah. Yeah. And in the old days, when printers were you know, coercive, he first started in the first workshop he was in, it was all piecework. Hmm. And that was the incentive get going, kid. You want to make some money, you want to pay your rent, get going. Yeah. It was piecework. And that's what built the speed in those days. Yeah. And the Dutch now they pay the workers as a salary. And they're, they're good workers, but there's no incentive for them. So yeah. it's just slower and slower and slower and mm. slower. And quality is down and down and down. There's an age to citizens, what she knows it's got to be. Say I'm not quite sure how many people have to Then a bigger question is going to say it's time for incorporation. Yeah. Oh, is this mic not on? It's not on. It was uh, crackling earlier. Like, you can feel the experiment with it. They told me it was crackling. I unplugged plugged it back in. It's still <coughs> crackling. So I just simply I put the volume up on the laptop mic oh, and put okay. the volume down there. You can try it backwards if you like, just okay. see if it's changed. Okay. Because they said, is Dave actually whispering because he doesn't well, want us to hear him? Or is this his normal tone? It might all, once the computer itself has been reset, it might come back to normal. But I'm not going to break up the screen and reset it. Just, if you put them both up, it starts to echo. And if you put them both down, you can't hear us. So. 
big thing. Hmm. It usually goes a bit farther than that. Yeah. Well, we normally have about eighty percent, but that's it. Let's see what they're see what they're going to tell you. Yeah, yeah. I think Tosses is this normal tone. Has been. It's not but, trying to whisper to hide. But, no, but is it crackling? Sound, no, yeah. I don't know. What does it sound like now? I suspect it could be. Ooh, nice. crackly. Yeah. Oh, geez. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Just go back. It'll be a, a computer reset. In fact, now that I think about that, I haven't reset this machine for uh, yeah. some weeks and weeks. Yeah. Yeah. It's not good. They're good at this these days, but they do. Sounds like I had turned the bass up too far. It sounds like someone's going down the car and or down the road and their car's vibrating. So what do you do about show and tell? We got that nice stuff that came in yesterday. Did you see it yesterday? Probably no, I didn't get to see it. Well, I heard you telling about it. Interesting and quite rare stuff. What that one hand pot? Exactly nine o'clock and seventeen seconds. Let me just get around this, uh, this blood blossom thing. Oh, yeah. Second floor, third floor? Still haven't gotten the new part for the microscope? No, just waiting for it to come. It's, uh, Amazon says we'll be delivered February 2nd. It's Amazon Marketplace. It's some joke of the place in China. It's okay, because there's so much going on. I don't have time to play with it. Play with it. Play with it. I just want to finish this. Let's, let's look at some prints. Zoom out. Okay, what we've got here. There's people here who weren't here yesterday, so I'm going to start putting it in. So. We've got a way of searching for options of interesting keywords. There's standardized keywords, Mokuhanga, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Of course, I'm not going to be searching the Apple options in Mocha Honda. So, even when something good comes up, a lot of people are seeing it, we jump on it. Yeah, yeah. The, price goes, the price goes up. But I've got a bunch <coughs> of keywords that I've learned that are fairly rare. People who have Mocha Honda but don't know what it is, they describe it as this, or this, or this. And I have searches in Yahoo auction for those, those keywords. Yeah. And now and then something comes up, and it's almost always, I mean, we get to see it. So, bingo. We get whatever it was at stock price. Yeah. And we get a whole deck of factory. This guy had about, he had about, I don't know exactly the count, 10 or 15 different auctions. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. yeah, 10 or 15 different auctions. And it's some kind of uh, junk dealer. He's not a print dealer or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's just a junk dealer who got this box of stuff he found at a house somewhere. And he did a bit of research. You can see some, he's got these, some of the attributes in wrong. He's Googled to try and find stuff. And anyway, so he put them up and he didn't mention the word about print, so we got a whole bunch of them. Most of them at the stock price. And there's a bunch of things that are not too interesting, but in here there are a few things, so let me start with the really interesting ones to make sure we don't run out of time. Yeah. There are three, let's get this stuff out of the way first. 
Jed said he he finally got his first print from the Japan Journey series, and he's happy. Oh, so he must have been lovely. Was he in the second group or something? No, I don't think so. I think just male has really? been slow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But I'm glad it arrived. All right, first thing, he's done all this. There's three little envelopes here. And what these are, these are Sudimono in the original Sudimono sense. Let's take a look at one and we'll see what I mean. What it is. I'll get it out of plastic here. This is a woodblock print, and it's got it's got there's a bunch of poems on here and a picture which probably relates to some of one of them. It's poem blossoms, maybe the theme. I can't remember. It's not a question. And it's a poetry circle. There were many many poetry circles all through the 1800s in Japan, and it was common for those guys to make commemorative woodblock prints with their poems sometimes, mm -hmm. frequently for exchange with other poetry groups, and they would have some kind of internal contest or decision or the and each pay money or whatever, please choose my poem. And a bunch of poems would be selected and sent out to a workshop for, for making a good about print. And these are not prints that would have been sold in the old days. They were just for exchange within the group. Mm -hmm. We would get one and go home. And we do know that now and then groups would exchange them with other groups. Yeah. So this group of 12 guys would have a New Year's party meeting with another group of 12 guys yeah. and get drunk together and do their poems and have fun and be there and laughing. And then at the end of the meeting, here's our little present for you for this year. And they would receive the present from the other guys. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, oh, holy crap, they did such a good job this year. We have to work harder next year to make sure life's this better. Yeah. yeah. So point being, top <coughs> quality paper, top quality workshop, top quality carver, everything was cost to no object. Now this one's a pretty simple one. There's no metal gold leaf and stuff like that. But the point being, superb delicacy. It's the most expensive Hosho paper that money could have bought back then. And the carving is just to die. And these are extremely rare because there would only have been, you know, whatever, 10 or 15 or 20 of these things made. Mm. Each guy would go home with one and they would get exchanged with some people in the group. And it's hard to believe this is actually carved on wood. It looks like it's been drawn with a brush, like with a single hair at the end of the brush. <laughs> and these are dated, but it's an, uh, it's an archaic dating style. And we'll have to, you and I will have to look this up, Ken, later on. It's spring. But it's it's you know, the sixty year it's the twelve year zodiac cycle on a five oh, no. year in fact this this yeah. year coming up now it's the end of the sixty year cycle <coughs> it's the last pig okay. it's the pig at the end of the cycle so this is and I don't remember what so it's the one of the twelve animals and then which of the five cycles it is and that tells you within sixty years what year it is yeah. and then you look at the tone of the print and the kind of paper and that gives you which you know, sixty year group you know, wow. so, but I don't I'm sorry I don't have the chart here to tell and I can't read that second character. So this is dateable, and they've dated it in a poetic, literary illusion way. And there'll be a, you know opening words or a thank you words by the, the head guy and his poem, and then the other people who put the poems. Anyway, there are three of these in this group, and they went for the opening price of a, a thousand yen each. You're going to look it up, are you? you I find am curious. Second, all of a sudden, can you read that second poem? <clears throat> because I can't. I can take some guesses yeah, at okay, it. Okay, have a go. Cameron's going to do some magic in the background here. Yeah, I'll pass it over so you can see it. Yeah, it you anyway, there are three of them in this deck. That was the smallest one. This one. This one a bit more ex expansive production, expensive production. Oh, wow. More poems from each you one. You may need to zoom out for this one. Okay, yeah. zoom out first and then come back here. And this is, there's another more. This is a more expansive production, yes. We always see these things folded, of course, because they were folded. Probably they were even folded when they were passed out on that day. Bunch of poems, and this one, now I've got there's gold pigments, there's metallic pigments. This one is, they throw in the kitchen sink at this. Are you visible? Is that okay? I don't know if you can see, there's metallics. I can see them, so you tone the bronze. And what are you looking at? What is the picture here? It's a box, box and it looks like an umbrella. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, it's those lucky symbols. There's the the hotel's hammer. There's a bag of rice. There's the you know, uh, straw thing that the guy wears in the back to keep the rain off. It's a box full of lucky, you know, lucky symbols. Things that would have been used. Oh, well, if I had another printer, I'd show you. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. And super, super, this paper is 10 times thicker and richer than any paper we would use today. And also, it is unsized. 
this paper. Huh. And this is another mystery. Almost always when we find these old city motor prints. These are woodblock prints. It's printed, it shows through the back, and the paper is absolutely unsized. And it's not just that the sizing has become soft over the years. This is unsized paper. And I've tried to ask some of the older printers, and the guy says, yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows how it was done. Anyway, let me put that one away. Let's go ahead and a bunch of stuff. Here. So in this option, there are three of these. I'm not seeing any comments here. Can I get on, on it? There's no one's talking. They're all just watching. watching. Yeah. That's two of them. And the third one was a different shape. They're all different shapes. It's interesting. And this one I might be able to show effectively. I might not because it's black on black on black. I'd have to zoom out again. It's sort of like need to see six, sorry. This is something uh, kabuki related. Something kabuki related. And this is a long one. I've always seen it. It's, it's, uh, it's getting cut. So the group name, the poem, the date is in there again. And it's some kind of lacquered box depicted in the image. But you're not going to see this. It's, it's black on black on black. I don't know if I can find the right shiny spot to, to show this or not. Yeah. There are patterns there, in the yes. Is that it? That it's yes. lighting there. The reflective. <clears throat> then the very vivid brush goes out. And there's some kind of uh, text. It's, it's an announcement. This will be an announcement to the model. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. Let me guess that what this might be, because I see some Kabuki dudes names here. Ichikawa, I won't say Danjo, but I see Ichikawa something, something. I see Nakamoto. These are Kabuki schools, Kabuki actors. And I'm going to guess that this is one of those times where the guy says, from now on, next month, I'm going to be known as such and such, and they assume a new name. Mm. It could be wrong. It could be friendly. It could be some guy's retiring. It could be after the birth of a new son or something. It could be anything. I can't read it. But it will be some kind of Kabuki group announcement. And these may have been made in more uh, more quantities. They would be uh, higher, the workshop would be hard to do them, and they would go out to all the fans and supporters who were uh, ponying up to get them to support this group. And again, the paper is so thick and rich. I could roll up in this and go to sleep. It's just, <laughs> no, it's like a blanket. It's yeah. really, really, really thick and rich paper. Wow. Yeah. Anyway, that's that. That would be enough for a great show and tell. That would be enough. And we're really, really happy to get these. I've got a few dozen of them already in the collection, but it doesn't hurt to have a few more. <laughs> <laughs> now, we're going to skip a bunch of stuff here. We're going to cut to the chase. Let's see. There's a bunch of Cruciate that are not good condition. There's a bunch of uh, Meiji era prints that are just run of the mill Meiji era active prints. We'll get these out of the way here. These are just kind of like, we'll put some of them in the shop. Some are, the unfortunate, some, there's a kid in the house and he's drawn the beard on grandma. <laughs> Nothing has changed, you know. This is a cruciate and it must have been somewhere. And somebody's taken a pencil or a pen and drawn some kind of beard on, on the old lady's picture. So, <laughs> well, anyway, it was, they, 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 that just drives home again. Woodblock prints, they weren't art or they weren't expensive, they weren't anything. Yeah. It, it's just, these are just your cheap dirt. So, you know, this is each color down. Someone's asking, uh, what's the deal with the unsized paper? Like, oh, it dissolves when wet, or it could rip while printing. Sizing yeah, we have no idea. So, 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 so how so, on earth did they do that? We don't. It's a, and I'm not thinking that's a real, real mystery. And it's not just me that's mystified by it. So, so let's get those out of there. Let's go and see that. What else was in the auction was a group of same chapter things. Now, we talked about the St. Jaffa prints in the auction, uh, in the, well, uh, in the David's Choice video yeah. that I made last week. And they were prints, I don't have to make they were prints about this picture, St. Jaffa prints with the design, and they always had the black border around, they were always exactly the same size, and they were made in groups for collectors. And now and then they would make a bit of a more special production, and they would make what's called a nicho. There would be one design that was too big for one St. Jaffa. So we have to design, and you can see the borders on the outside to show the shape of two of them. And what we have is a group here of yoncho. 
Now these are not all that super rare. There were lots and lots and lots of, of, of Senchaf made in Yoncho yeah. size. And we have here, it's something to do with some kind of uh, seasons through the Yoshiwara. All of these prints have something. We have the Oiran, the Lady of the Night here with her attendants doing something. This looks like kind of like a festival preparation. And we have a, a, a geisha attendant here, kind of shamisen. These are all this is right? These are all yoncho, except we got the sponsors' mm -hmm. names in the middle, and they are beautifully, beautifully, beautifully printed. Unfortunately, they've been glued onto the world's most god-awful, ridiculous, pulpy, terrible paper that's ever been created. And the, the washi now has picked up a yellow stain from that. Last night, I don't, uh, I do have a little bit. Last night, I did this. I soaked one of them to take it off the backing paper. And you can see the washi has is dyed now. It's gone brittle. It's gone hard. It's been really acidified. And one of these was spoiled, so I just took it off. It was already torn, so I used that as a guinea pig last night. So we have sort of, we've sort of saved the stuff. It was stabilized now. We'll keep it inside acid free paper. But it's too bad, because for a hundred years, and these are dated. It's dated Taisho, uh, Taisho, I'm sorry, did you say Taisho? Oh. Uh, Ju? No. No, oh, Taisho. Ju. 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 Yeah, Ju. Ju. Or Ju Ichi, maybe? Ju Ichi. Ah, Ju Ichi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ju Ichi. 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 So unfortunately, for, for over a hundred years, they've been bonded to this terrible paper. But whatever, they're going to be safe now. And they still, the prints themselves are nice and beautiful. But the highlight of the story is, when Doisan, my friend, he was here on Monday, Doisan's our, our, our associate, he's also a Senshafta collector. He has perhaps, well, I can't say it's Tokyo's biggest collection. He has one of Tokyo's major Senshafta collections. He's mm -hmm. been working on it for decades, decades, decades. I knew that this auction was coming up, and I didn't, before I showed it to him, I said, Doisan, there's an auction coming up for a bunch of Yoncho Yoshiwara Senshafta. And he's like, uh -huh, okay. And I've got a lot of those. I said, so I said, but inside there, there's another item inside there, which is, and I said, oh, no, Yoncho, have you seen a Hacho eight? And he says, no, I've got a couple. They're kind of rare, but yeah, I've seen a couple of eight. They don't come up very often. Yeah. And I said, what's the max you've ever seen? And he said, well, 12, of course. There's no way they would never make anything more than 12. You know, Junicho. And I said, yes. okay, okay. And I let it go. He's going to come next Monday. And he's going to see. Can I do this? That's going to open up what we have here. We have a 24. A 24. And I had no idea that such a thing exists. We have a 24. Other ones. Can I get a card? Is it different? No, I'm not. Uh, I know, ordered spray group. Ah. I was thinking it might be the attachment from the Yeah, I was thinking that. Nope, spray. I'll bring this up. Today. Anyway, we have a 24, Niju Yonko. And what it is, it's an, I forget the Japanese name, Oiran Do, Do, Shi, no, the parade. The Oiran, the, the famous parade member. Oh, what the they're having here this week? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I forgot the word. The oh, Oiran. Oh, what did they call that? The parade of. It was the, Gyoretsu? No, 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 no. no, no. I mean, that's what it is, it's a prayer, but it's, it's the, and the, the top number one Oidan prospect group for each of them. Hello, 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 well, it's not much to show. There, there it is. It's a 24. You can see the shape of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 12. So it's actually it's on three sheets of paper. It's on oban size paper. There's one sheet. There's a joint. This is not one single sheet of washi. One sheet of paper there, one sheet of paper in the middle, and one over on the left-hand side. <coughs> so it's actually it's an 8, an 8, and an 8, but done in a single design. Yeah. And Doisan has never seen anything like this before. And it's attached to the horrible thing. And it's attached. And you can see, you can smell it, right? You can smell that stink. Yeah, it's you can smell must. it. Yeah, the Is musty, that the right word? Mold, musty, mold, yeah. Mold. Oh. And the problem I had last night when I took this one off the backing sheet, the washi paper, which would have been originally been a nice quality washi, it's so uh, hurt by the pulp now that it too starts to dissolve. Yeah. So normally when we're taking them off, it's no problem because the backing paper is weaker than the washi. Mm -hmm. So you soak it for long enough, 
as you pull them apart, the backing paper breaks up first, yeah. normally. This one, it didn't do that. The washi starts to break up too. So I have some decisions to make here. I'm going to do nothing in the short term right now, yeah. but this one has to come off this backing paper. I'm, I'm not quite sure how to do that. Mm. There's Kadazuri, there's patterns on the kimono here and there, there's uh, no, Minoni Zuri, there's Shonen Zuri, there's the cherry blossoms I think have faded. I think this thing was hung on a wall and displayed for a long time and there would have been vivid pink up on the cherry blossoms and it has gone. And of course it's been folded and allowed to be obliterated. Anyway, it's a spectacular, spectacular item. The auction closed at like 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> This guy just doesn't know how to run auctions. There's nobody's doing it. There's nobody's doing No keywords. Closing at 1.30 in the morning when nobody's going to be up and awake to bid on it. So yeah. I set my alarm. I went to bed at 10.30 as usual and set my alarm. Woke up. What am I doing? Why am I awake in the middle of the night? Oh, yeah. I remember that. There's a really so cool print. Cool auction, so. Found the name and the year for this. All right, let's have a look at it. Look so, at this. I'm happy to have an official loop. Let me get this other side. For a it can be read two different ways. Name meaning what? The name. The name of the year. Oh yeah, okay, okay. okay. Let's start <coughs> with Kinoe Tatsu or Koshin. Ko and then Haru. Is Haru. The so, so this is spring. So, so, so. <coughs> and so Kinoe Tatsu tells us what possible year is going to be in a cycle <coughs> of sixty. When would you have guessed? Because they're. Um, this, I, I think, actually, this is Meiji, mid, mid Meiji. Then 1844, or 1904, or 1964. Well, not, no, 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 so, no, 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 not no, no, any no, no, of them. 1844, or 1784 would be the next. No, 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 so no, 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 no,
Well, you've seen my Coutier reproduction, the one with people in the shop to show people. Right? right. I've been telling people the original Coutier were made wonderfully quickly, bang, bang, published, published. But there hasn't been the capability to make any Coutier reproductions all through the 20th century. Right. Because they're too difficult to make, and it would have been too expensive for a project. Mm -hmm. So I was, I was, you know, my Coutier reproduction in 2004, cool. 2004, was the first one in 100 years, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah, blah. The other day, on an auction site. Oh, someone else did it. Someone in the 1950s, this is by his description, he said, 1950s. And he listed the craftsman's names, the spectacular Coutier reproduction was made. And this is news to me. I, mm. I'm really interested to see this, if that's what it is. And I will, I will quickly eat some more crow. I didn't prepare a, 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 a crow no to eat here this morning. <laughs> but I will happily eat crow, because I would really, really like to see this. If that's what this package is. I'm not sure about different stuff with this. What's inside? Nothing. An empty package. That would be tragic. Okay. <laughs> How many layers of wrapping before this? And this is 1950s, 1960s packaging. So, so far, so good. That looks like what it is. It's already starting to go fox. We have to get it out of here. It is indeed. A famous, well-known Coutier design. Look at this. And Dave is eating crow. This is a reproduction. Look at this. I had no idea such a thing existed. It's made a larger size than the original. Original Coutier were about in my hands there. This is a bit larger. Let's have a look at this. Yeah, it's modern. It's not made here. It's modern. Holy crap. Look at this. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, mid 20th century reproduction of the Coutier. And done. Beautiful. Delicate colors, delicate carving. I don't know as good as the original. I'm going to have to find the original and get them side by side to compare. Let's very nice. zoom in. This is very, very, very nice. What? Okay, fine. I had no idea there was any, anybody capable of doing this. Now, the guy in the auction, he listed craftsmen's names, a carver's name and a printer's name. So he must know more about this. Some more paper I don't know. There? I don't see anything here. People are saying, oh, very beautiful, or very pretty, and that's beautiful. There's absolutely no information here. So I'm going to have to write back to this guy. And say, where have you got your information? What is this? What's going on? What a treasure. What a treasure. He described it as being 1950s, which was, well, I was born in 1950, so Dave is a little squirt. This is the And if there's one, there must be more. Nobody would just make one. There must have been a set, a series. Yeah. No, dude. There must have been a set of them. They say what company? To, or I don't remember offhand. I'm going to have to go back to the listing now, and then I've got, I've got a phone to phone about and find out and get some information. Future chairs. Oh, the colors are so smooth. Mm, they are. They're yeah. beautiful. This is the, one of the key points about the Coutier. They were printed with such insanely delicate colors. You know, the difference between that background color and that moon color, it's there, it's different, you know. And then once you get into the tree and stuff here, look at this. Mm. They have really done a magnificent job here. And I'm going to reevaluate the way I've been thinking about the 20th century craftsman. I've been bad mouthing them just top, top to bottom, you know, because I've been looking at the easy and saying, why don't you guys in the 20th century, why didn't you honor that history and do that, you know. Show me the really nice thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, on the umbrella? No, on the, on the blue obi. Yeah, there too, but the umbrella also has yeah. some nice, yeah. nice ones. I guess part of it is to try and, you know, there were obviously people, carvers and painters, capable of doing this. So why wasn't more of this work done? Then you have to start to shift the blame, not from the craftsmen, but to the publishers. Mm -hmm. or, or the market. You know, the publishers didn't find things that worked in the market and went cheap and yeah. went fast and down that long. 
I didn't partner on what was this project. Did it survive? Did it do well? Did it uh, do you know, Obviously not, because there aren't many of them yeah. there. So. Anyway, there we have it. A wonderful view. This has made my day. I was having a bad day today. I didn't sleep well, and I'm looking forward to the tax meeting this afternoon. But I am a nice, happy cat. Well, it's not the tax man, it's no. the tax account. You're right. The next step is the tax man. Yeah. Wow. 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 Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, well, that's a nice way to end this today. Good, 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 good. Very nice. So many presents today. This wasn't uh, all that cheap. The guy felt it had value. Um, but again, right. no, nobody else bid for it. Uh, it was fourth. I think he opened it at four thousand something, four thousand five hundred yen. Yeah. And nobody else bid for it. And I was hesitant. I mean, come on, maybe a twentieth century creature you like, No, it's probably a photocopy. No, I was a bit hesitant about it because I yeah. didn't think such a thing existed. Right. But something about the picture, the illustration, there was a bit of side light on it. It just looked like a wood block print. Took a chance. So I thought, yeah, I might get suckered here, but let's give this a go. And the information that he put was real people's names. It was real craftsmen's names. It just, you know. It just made sense. It was a well-researched scam, or it, it mm. seemed like if it were a scam, it was well put together. But no, oh, it's happy. the real thing. So, I am one happy ah, cat. Here's the company. Yeah, no, that's an envelope oh, okay. he's used. This, this is just patent. I mean, he's, oh, to okay. make it stiff, it. Yeah. he's used from some other Seriously. other stuff, okay, and he's crossed it out. So I suspect that's nothing to do with. Okay, okay. We'll, see. we'll see. We'll see. Okay, Timmerson, I think we'd better, uh, because you and I have a ton of yep. paperwork to do this yes, morning we before, do. We, uh, before we get off for our meeting. So let's I know, sign off. Okay. Hopefully before tomorrow's stream, I will try and remember to test the microphone and find out what's happening with this thing, to see what's going on with it. But what's yeah. today? Today's Thursday. We will Thursday. be back here today to tomorrow. tomorrow. I'll be probably working either on this one or the next one in the series. I've got to get them finished before, yep. uh, before Sunday. And I've also got to do sizing streams. I've got to do another two batches of sizing before I leave. And that deadline is coming closer and closer and closer. Yeah. So tomorrow's stream may be carving here. It may be sizing upstairs. I'm not sure. And then an advance warning. There will be Monday. Coming up Monday will be the final stream for a two-week period. I'm heading off to Canada to see my family. So for those of you who have just joined us for the first time, be, be aware that we're going to be having a gap. I'll be off from Tuesday the 12th through the 23rd. Japan, Japan. So there'll be a gap. You'll have to get your fix somewhere else. So maybe Cameron could do a daily stream while I'm gone or something. Do mm -hmm. something. Talk about the uh, tax office. And show oh, yeah. Things. Show you the spreadsheets. I'm putting yeah. together. <laughs> Cameron, let's get to work. Right. Let's get out of here. Thanks, See guys. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.